Good day, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Um, whatever time it is in the world, wherever you are, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. I really, really appreciate everyone, and we all know that God is good all the time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whew. I want to thank everybody that are that that's here for the first time. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. And for those of you who follow me continually, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone old and new, for your love, for your support, for 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 being here. For being here and, and just um just joining me. And as I read scripture and explain things, and um, I just pray that uh, what you're getting out of of, of of what I say from the show, that you're spreading it, spreading it to others, and that um, it's helping you in some way. You can always drop me a line, and um, if you have a testimony, um you would like to tell me about if you have a prayer request or anything any questions any comments any concerns i'm always either email away a text a phone call or whatever away so i'm on different platforms whatever platform you're listening on there should be some contact information there or a link to my blog and all my information is on there. Um, what we're going to be reading about, um, we're going to be reading Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. And get your Bibles. And if you don't have your, I'll be reading um, from the um, King KJV, King James Version. If you don't um, have your Bibles with you, that's okay. Um, you can write down Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and, and read it uh, later. Read the whole chapter later. Um, or just just listen, listen in. Um, first little announcement here I want to give you. This is an email that I received. And um, Thursday, Thursday, October 3rd. Um, is bring your Bible to school day. Bring your Bible to school day. This is an email from Faith Talk. Um, here, um, FM 92.7, um, 1500 WLQV. And, um, you must go on their site. Um, it's called bringyourbible.org. The site is called bringyourbible.org and, um, sign up. And when you go to that site, it's going to, going to be a questionnaire and, um, you can win a trip. You can win a trip, um, to Washington, I believe. And, um, go on that site and check it out. Um, there's a questionnaire and, um, there's a lot of fun little things here to do on the site here. So, um, go ahead and check that out. Bringyourbible.org. And again, October the 3rd is bringyourbibletoschool.org. So, oh, right here it says that, um, when you enter... Um, you'll be entering for a trip to win four for four, a trip for four to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. So, again, go on that site, bringyourbible.org, and check that out. So, you have any children or whatever, um, it, 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 that site tells you all about it all about it so um you can make a difference and um join in in that movement today today and it says this is the annual nationwide event 
in which elementary kids through college students bring their own Bibles to school and share encouragement from God's Word with their classmates. All right. Together, we remember that we are not alone in in expressing our faith, and we can celebrate our religious freedom openly. This year, the big day will be on Thursday, October 3rd, but we need your help. Sign up. Sign up your own family to participate. Encourage other families and students to register and participate. And spread the word among leaders at your church and Christian organizations. And I am spreading the word to you as well. So, that's a little message there. And uh, we want to get the word out of the Lord um in each and every day um in all areas and all ways of our lives serve God love him with everything that you have and then love your neighbor as yourself these are this is the command okay Luke chapter 1 I'm going to be reading well I'm going to let the narrator read because um, it's, it's, I think it goes, starts from 26. I think I have it queued up from um, 26. And this is when the angel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary, and told her that she would be conceiving a baby. And the angel also told her that her cousin, that her cousin that was up in age was also pregnant as well. So listen in as, let me pull this up as I play this for you and then we will discuss it. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass, that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary 
voice said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord, to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is so wonder, wonderful. And I will be um, reading a poem before we close about this um, chapter, Luke chapter 1. It is so much, I, I've spoken about this um, so much, and um, it's so much going on. Um, around here and we know that um, you, you read before about um, when Zacharias was told um, that his wife would be bearing a child that he didn't believe it and him not being able to speak until after the baby was born um, that was caused from his unbelief so go ahead and read about it but this is the beginnings of Jesus and, and what we see here 
we see Gabriel coming down from assignment from God from heaven and delivering this message to Mary, a woman who who was a virgin. She was betrothed to Joseph. Basically, um, it, it's more than an engagement because basically, um, if there was to be a breakup, there would have to be they would have to go through paperwork through through a a a a, a, a course of a, a of of legal course. So it just couldn't be, you know, the engagement is off. We're through, and you go your way, and I go my way. They would have to go to court and paperwork and things filed. So it was just, it was more than an engagement. And really, basically, you, uh, as we speak today, you're taken off the market. So you can't date anybody else or anything. You're strictly together. And um, you're not to, for a, a certain amount of time, you're not to be living together. Um, no, no sex, no fornication or anything like that. I think it, it's about for a year, something like that. You're, 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 you're courting, you're together, but you're not in any type of relationship, sexual relationship at all. And so you can't, um, um, say, well, it's over or this or that. When you come into this, um, this is a, a legal, um, uh, agreement. This is binding, but you're not fully married. So she was betrothed to Joseph. That's what that means. Um, she was in no form ever. She was a virgin, never had any relations with a man. So when Gabriel came and told her these things, she asked, how is this going to be? Seeing that I haven't been with a man. And so he told him the Holy Ghost was going to shower over, overshadow her and she would become pregnant that way and then he said and by the way your cousin that's up in age that was barren she was barren couldn't have any kids anymore she was old he said that she is pregnant with a child as well and so when mary she took off to to go visit her cousin the joy and everything she's pregnant um elizabeth's pregnant too right here Two miracles are going on right here because Mary is pregnant with, with the Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Jesus Christ, son of God. And also Elizabeth is pregnant with Jesus's cousin, John the Baptist. And we know about John the Baptist as we read the Bible. So two wonderful miracles going on here. And then when they got together, they had a wonderful, wonderful time together. And they praised the Lord and 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 everything. You hear the things that Mary said and everything. She just praised the Lord and was so glad that the Father had chosen her to bear this wonderful, beautiful king that was coming into the world and so the savior of the world and so she was humble and when when she she met elizabeth and and elizabeth got filled with the holy spirit the baby leaped in her stomach she already knew who her cousin mary was carrying the miracle and it was just a wonderful time they spent together and everything. And then Mary went back home. And Elizabeth went on and had her baby. And a short time afterwards, Mary had her baby too. And I mean, it was just the two wonderful, wonderful miracles. And if if the Bible was true, the Bible was bond, the Bible is the word of God, the Bible is holy. And this is in the Bible. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from Luke chapter 1. And, and, and this is what happened. And this is how Jesus became um, implanted in Mary's womb. And how Mary bore a child. These are, this is the beginnings of Jesus coming on the scene. Son of God. Whew. 
when you think about all these things, and I encourage you to go back and read this and follow along and just really do some in-depth studying. When you think about these things and just how wonderful just everything is and all the preparation and beautiful things that God uh, did for us, it's so, so wonderful. Now, I'm going to pull up right here. Let me let me move my microphone. Um, hold on a second here. Um, it's going to be a little noisy with my um, computer here. But that's okay. I'm going to read you uh, one of my poems. And as I always say, you all know everything is copyrighted and everything like that or whatever. So, um, everything's all good. It's my original work um, that I've written. And this is called um, Mary Visited by the Angel. And I go ahead and do a poem from um, Luke chapter... 1 verses 26 and 38. But we see here that we read all the way down Luke all the way down to verse 80. Um, we did verse 26 through to verse 80. And that's why um, it's kind of long. So I let the narrator go ahead and read that. But this poem here is Luke from Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through 36. And it goes like this. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to deliver a message to a virgin named Mary. She was in love with Joseph as he was in love with she. With she. The angel greeted her, telling her to fear not, for God had found favor with her. No fear shall she be in, because God has sent thee. The angel Gabriel began to tell her that in her womb she would conceive a baby. And his name is to be called Jesus. He will be the greatest among all men. Perfect Without any sins. And so his life begins. The Holy Ghost is to come upon her. And the power of the highest will overshadow her. In her womb she will carry the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Son of the Most High. Whereby the angel of the Lord has confirmed these words, spoken to Mary, eye to eye. Mary, mother-to-be, did not disagree, for she loved and trusted the Lord. And so, it came to be, it came to be. The end. Beautiful, 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 Little poem, little something, something that I wrote here. And um, just tune in every week and we're going to be discussing some things. I want to leave with you um, two scriptures here. Um, I received scriptures here. Um, I have two apps and um, I call them the Jesus app. And this is one I just want to read for, for to you. I just want to leave you with a couple scriptures here before I close. This is taken from the ESV, um, John 15, verses 4 through 11. Abide in me. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Unless I, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. 
If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just As I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you. That my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Hmm. John 15 verses 4 through 11. I want to read you. And leave you with one more. I have two apps that come up every every night, every morning, about 12 a.m. every morning. And um, I want to read this one to you too. And this is Paul's prayer for the church. The ESV Ephesians chapter 1 verses 16 through 19. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, That you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his great might. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16 through 19. I'm going to leave you with these two scriptures. Look them up. Do your studying if you need to. But it's just wonderful, wonderful words of the Lord. Wonderful words of the Lord. Whew. Lord have mercy. This is beautiful. Okay. So this is the show for today. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, We have another one coming up, and I may come in during the week. just depends. I got a lot of things going on, and um, I just stay tuned. And remember to go over to that site and um, log in. You may win a trip. Go over to that site for you and and family members the four of you remember thursday october 3rd october 3rd is bring your bible to school day so go over to bringyourbible.org and check that out and sign up hallelujah gonna end now in prayer father we just thank you lord almighty we just thank you for the day We just thank you for us being here today alive and assembling together. Getting knowledge of your word. Having that love that you have given us in our hearts. Father God, showing you love, doing your will. And showing others that love through your Holy Spirit that shines and flows through us. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father. I thank you for, for, for shielding your sons and your daughters, for being that wonderful Father, for taking care of us all. 
I thank you for the air that we breathe. I thank you, Father, for the trees and the leaves and the beautiful sun and stars and the moon. I thank you for never leaving us, always being here, Father God. And you are wonderful. You are the same God, Father God, no beginning and no ending. You are the same God, Father God, that led the Israelites uh, by day and by night. That they knew that you, you, you had their path, that you had their steps. And we know today, Father God, that before we were ever in our mother's womb, you knew us. That you have our path, that you have our direction. And I pray, Father God, that everyone here, Father God, knows their direction, knows their path. And if they don't, Father God, I pray that they come to you, Father God, for your guidance and for your love. Because we know, Father God, in the scriptures, uh, we trust in you with all our heart and we lean not on our own understanding. And all that we do, acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. That is, Father God, your words in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. We thank you for your holy words. We thank you, Father, for always being here, never leaving us, going before us, walking with us, directing our paths. Your love and your grace and your mercy, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, through Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord Almighty, thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Woo. Woo. Brothers and sisters, amen. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. I love you. Take care wherever you're at. My information is there. And you always feel free to contact me for prayer. Um, I, I'm a prayer intercessor, um, ministering and, and doing the work, the will of the Lord, prophesying the word. Hallelujah. 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 Take care.